Wait, is this really a German PZH 2000 or a studio apartment on tracks? Because this artillery man looks way too comfy. He's literally loading a 155mm shell while wearing slippers. But don't rush to laugh just yet. This monster howitzer is created for some serious damage. It can fire three rounds in 10 seconds. That's its max rate of fire, and that's really fast. However, there's a catch. This German howitzer was never tested in wars where artillery is needed 24-7. So how well can the Panzer Haubitze handle the brutal demands of the Russia-Ukraine war then? A lot depends on how well-trained the crew is. That's why Ukrainian artillerymen went through intense training at German military ranges. It lasted a month and a half, practically without breaks. And it wasn't a walk in the park. It was especially tough for the mechanics who had to learn every tiny detail inside and out to properly maintain the system before and after battles. They had a separate training program. They went through the course three times. And to make things even harder, most Ukrainian gunners had only worked with old Soviet artillery before. Machines with zero electronics, let alone NATO's high-tech systems. So saying they were blown away by the PZH-2000's onboard systems is an understatement. It's like going from driving a car to piloting Darth Vader's spaceship. Hit that like button if you just imagined Jedi faces of shock as they see Vader loading shells into a PZH-2000. But unfortunately, high-tech electronics aren't always battlefield-friendly in heavy rain or snowstorms. There's a real risk they could malfunction due to excessive moisture or dirt. That's why soldiers inside wear special boots and even use a vacuum cleaner. So maybe the next-gen version of the PZH-2000 should come with a free cleaning service. Just kidding, but keeping the system clean and dry is a major task for the crew. But the Panzer has advantages that make you forget about these little inconveniences. According to a former Ukrainian commander, the PZH-2000's undeniable strength is its protection, thanks to homogeneous rolled steel armor. It's called Panzer for a reason. It weighs 10 to 12 tons more than any other howitzer in its class. That extra weight? It's all about crew protection, because training an artillery crew is long and expensive. German engineers also put serious thought into preventing catastrophic ammunition detonations, a nightmare scenario for any crew. The way they designed the ammo storage is fantastic. The propellant charges are kept in separate compartments, just like in a Leopard or Abrams tank, behind armored doors. Even if something hits, the panels blow out, but the crew survives. We've mentioned in previous videos that every Western weapon system in Ukraine is constantly hunted by Russian reconnaissance and strike drones. But when the PZH-2000 was being developed, drone warfare wasn't a massive threat yet. Surprisingly though, this howitzer's armor is proving up to the challenge. It's one of the few vehicles that doesn't need extra cage armor for drone defense because it can handle itself. For a Lancet's shaped charge jet to reach the ammo and trigger detonation, it first has to pierce the side armor, then the side skirts, then hit the track, then get past a road wheel, then go through the inner hull wall. And only after all that, if anything is left of the warhead, might it actually reach the shells. The PZH-2000 has a five-person crew, and they stay inside at all times. There's no need to step out during battle to load shells like with the Soviet 2S7 Beyond, another howitzer fighting alongside the German system in Ukraine. And that factor? It literally saved a Ukrainian artilleryman's life when his vehicle was hit. When our driver was killed and I was wounded, the other three guys who weren't hurt got out and did exactly what they were trained to do. Now imagine you're a loader on a Caesar howitzer, firing shells when suddenly a Russian recon drone spots you. Chances are you won't just have a kamikaze drone coming your way. You'll get a rain of mortar rounds or cluster shells in your sector. That's a massive risk. But inside the PZH-2000, artillerymen feel a lot safer. The problem with artillery is that we're constantly under fire, and most of the time without armor. Here, I feel secure. I know this thing can take a 152mm shell. Even if it lands just a few meters away, we'll be fine inside. Want to learn more about Western artillery and tech in the war? Subscribe to the channel! But can the Panzer Haubitze handle muddy fields and snow-covered plains in Eastern Europe? We've used the PZH-2000 in rain and snow. It's not like the Payan, where if it rains, you just stop working. In fully automatic mode, this howitzer only needs two crew members to keep firing, even though its standard crew is five. Besides the commander, gunner, and driver, there are two loaders who step in when reloading the ammo rack, or if the autoloader malfunctions. You're sitting in the gunner's seat. Here's the commander's spot. 
This is where the first and second loaders sit, and over there, that's the driver's seat. On combat missions, these guys feel confident because their safety comes first. The PZH-2000 is equipped with NBC protection, ventilation, and an automatic fire suppression system. During operation, we close all the hatches. The gun pulls in air through filters, creating internal pressure. This pushes all the smoke outside while firing. If chefs have a secret ingredient in their recipes, Western howitzer manufacturers have a built-in computer, the ultimate artillery assistant that calculates everything and helps deliver the perfect serving of destruction. I input the coordinates here, select the fuse type and set how it should detonate. If it's a programmable fuse, I enter the altitude for detonation. Then I make corrections. Once everything is set, I hit save and I'm ready to fire. The Ukrainian PZH-2000 crews have prepared plenty of surprises for the Russians in the form of 155mm shells. Their arsenal includes smart 155mm, M982 Excalibur, Volcano rounds, and even Indian-made 155mm munitions. Uh, this is in smart 155 shell. We use them against tanks. They're easy to operate because the gun calculates all the coordinates. Everything is automated. A Ukrainian artilleryman who has fired dozens of rounds describes what using these beasts is like. The max effective range depends on the shell type. Up to 30 kilometers, the firepower is at its peak. If the shell hits the target, nothing is left standing where it lands. Throughout the full-scale war, Ukrainians have tested various NATO shells. But are Germany's smart 155 shells as effective as the manufacturer claims? Here's how a Ukrainian soldier recalls using them. We found a spot where the enemy felt completely safe. They thought we couldn't hit them effectively. They didn't even bother hiding. Then we rolled in with a smart 155 shells, and let's just say we gave them a proper nightmare. The results didn't take long to show. For two days straight, our crew took out five tanks, each with a detonation. And here's how that looks in action. For this Russian tank, its encounter with the PZH-2000 was its last. In another clip, the howitzer engages in counter-battery fire, taking out a Russian Gatsant B along with its ammunition depot. The impact is impressive, but there's a trade-off. Maintenance time. Even after just two shots, servicing the gun takes a full day. So is this a deal breaker or does the firepower make up for it? On land targets, the PZH-2000 has proven itself 100%. But did you know that, in theory, it could have been used for naval strikes? Yep, you heard that right. In the 2000s, the German military explored ways to increase naval firepower without major ship modifications. Engineers even planned to replace the 76mm OTO Malera Compact on the Hamburg frigate with the PZH-2000's turret, which can hit targets up to 25 miles away. Sounds promising, but reality didn't quite match expectations. While test range trials were deemed successful, it's unclear whether it was ever tested at sea. Ultimately, before the Hamburg entered service, the PZH-2000 turret was removed. Since then, Germany hasn't experimented with land-based artillery on ships again. Our take? Weapons should be used for their intended purpose. That's how you get the best results. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Before the Russia-Ukraine war, the PZH-2000 had its first combat experience in Afghanistan, firing against the Taliban. But honestly, that was more of a live fire test range than a real war. The commander who trained me in Germany fired just 28 shells from a PZH-2000 in Afghanistan. On my first day in Ukraine, I fired two full ammo loads, 120 shells, then went to sleep very satisfied. In September 2006, three Dutch PZH-2000s were used in Operation Medusa, securing Panjwai and its surroundings. The following year, the Dutch deployed them to Uruzgan, where they supported the assault on Tarenkot. Meanwhile, Germany was hesitant to send its own PZH-2000s, since German politicians considered the mission a policing operation meaning troops were only supposed to have light weapons. That changed after three Bundeswehr soldiers were killed. Germany finally approved sending three howitzers to Kunduz, and on July 10, 2010, they saw combat for the first time, covering the evacuation of an armored vehicle that hit a mine. The Afghan war revealed some flaws in the PZH-2000. The ventilation system struggled in extreme dust, and extra top armor was needed because Taliban forces heavily relied on mortars. The biggest issue? overheating and dust infiltration, which could shut down the entire system. Germany later introduced an upgraded version to fix some of these problems. 
But let's be real, nothing could have prepared the PZH-2000 for Ukraine, where it's fighting a far stronger enemy than the Taliban. And yet, Ukrainian artillerymen swear by it. We are very grateful to the Chancellor of Germany and the German people for these ACS. This is a perfect weapon, one such howitzer is worth three Soviet ones we used to have. Compared to Soviet-era artillery, the PZH-2000 is king in armor, firepower, and automation. But its downsides? Complex maintenance and sensitive electronics. Even so, it remains one of the best self-propelled guns out there. What do you think is its biggest advantage? Armor, automation, or firepower? Drop your thoughts in the comments.